morning. Thank you for coming to attend my presentation. My name is Charles Ayayokelo. I teach economics at Gulu University in northern Uganda. As you can see, I've been around in this world for, for some time. So you may benefit from old age, but not knowledge, right? Let me take my camera. Yes, that's my topic. And a lot has been said about it yesterday. The ambassador really emphasized the benefit of economic integration. And uh, he talked a lot of nice things about it. And the secretary, the deputy secretary general, poured some cold water in on what he was saying. That it is not all that good. There are also some bad aspect of economic integration. So my role is to give a link between trade and poverty alleviation. And the link is what we are talking about, economic integration. So now I'm putting economic integration between trade and poverty integration, though it is interwoven. Right? They are part and parcel of each area. So economic integration may be looked at as a subset of, uh, on the one hand, trade, and on the other hand, poverty elevation. But I'm going to avoid generalization as I had yesterday, that economic integration is very good, has improved intra-trade from this to that, right? This is an empirical study, right? So. I'm going to be more specific to what we had yesterday. Now, I'll proceed as follows. I'll give the introduction, the theoretical framework, and the methodology. I'll discuss the results of the empirical work, then try to draw some lessons learned from the empirical work. Kennedy of USA said, a raising tide leaves all boats. Indeed, I was happy that he was not talking about trade, but if he were talking about trade, it will not lift all people, right? Some people will be losers and others again. This is what we had yesterday. I'm not saying anything new. So in economic integration, the point is there are losers and gain. As we liberalize our trade, we should take note that there are losers and gain. But economics is a nice subject. There's what we call Pareto optimality. They don't leave people behind. The losers have to be compensated, right? So I tend to think that uh, that's where uh, trademark may, may come in, right? As we improve efficiency, some traders along the highway have already been noted as losers, right? And uh, Facebook can come in to compensate them, not in monetary term, but in the way which would make them contribute to the improvement of the welfare of the society. Now, this is the background. I will not, we, most of us are from East Africa, so this, uh, we talked about it yesterday. And uh, the point is that uh, we are in economic integration. We have liberalized our trade. But we should note that we have not yet realized the full potential. I think if we are to pour water in a jar, we are still at the bottom of the jar. We have to fill the, the jar, right? The poverty is, is rampant. We have, it was emphasized yesterday. The nature of our export, the trade, is resource-based agricultural. You can hardly talk of any manufacturing export. The services are picking up. 
economic growth is always described as impressive, but I don't want to use that word myself because impressive could be 10% per annum, like in China. So if 5% is impressive, that's very good, right? We can take it like that. But the economic growth is not yet high enough to generate the type of trade we are looking forward to, right? Then it is rightly noted that uh, this is the concern. Eradication of poverty, and improvement of trade. And the East African community has been formed to do exactly that. Now, this study fits in because the impact of trade on poverty has not been resolved. It is debatable. The results has been inconclusive so far, and uh, the policy issues sought run all long term is again still debatable. But the ultimate end of the journey is inclusive development or growth. So trade eventually should bring us to inclusive development. We just know what it means later. Now, trademark gave those questions. I didn't create them myself, so I tried to answer those questions in the, in the paper. What are the impacts of improving trade flows and growth in the community? And how can this be a guarantee that poverty is elevated? Those are the questions given to me, and I tried to answer, answer them, All right? And I created an hypothesis there. I picked economic integration as an important driver, a factor, a dimension, which can improve trade flows, All right? And I tried to test it empirically. Now, yesterday we noted that uh, an economics theory, there's no economic theory which directly link, but all the trade theories ultimately say that free trade will improve welfare, right? Though the link is not quite clear. So, since there's no direct link between trade and um, and um, poverty. And I'm aware of certain methodology in economics, like the general equilibrium model, which probably will miss the point in the context of policy analysis. I decided to prove the underlying factor of trade and by extension, poverty. So the emphasis of this empirical work is to look at the underlying structure, the factors, then extend it to trade. And I thought it would be much more policy relevant than just purely economic analysis of welfare. Now, in order to do this, we will put some qualification to what has been said yesterday, is to look at the elasticity of economic integration with respect to, to trade. This will tell us roughly to what extent trade will try to eradicate poverty. I'm not going to go into to his theories behind all these things I'm going to do, but I may draw your attention to the pendulum theory of international trade. Theories have come in, theories have been thrown away, 
those thrown away have been brought in again. It is a pendulum. That's why it is not as pendulum. Especially regionalism. The old regionalism and the new regionalism where economic integration of East Africa fits in. Right? Now, the framework from economics, the empirical framework, is the gravity model. Right? This is a simple framework developed long ago in the 1960s. And it simply says, trade flows is a function or depends on the market size and the distance between the trading partners, as simple as that. That's the basic uh, gravity theory. Now, the trade flows. What are these trade flows here? Right? The trade flows here is the sum total of the exports and imports. Right? So if we can improve it as the title of the paper says, we can. Now, the market says, I think this is the intention of the economic integration. Economic integration is formed to increase the size of the market. Uganda alone would have been a market size of around 35 million since we are part of the five countries in the East African community. We are 140, so the market is much bigger. So I'm not deceived by that because a lot of those people are poor. So the possessing power of 140 people is still a lot to be desired until we improve our middle income group, which is very small. Right. Now, that market size in economics is measured by gross domestic product indicator can be nominal or real. But there are also other indicators. Then the distance. The distance is very interesting in the gravity model. All the costs related to trade is subsumed right in under di distance. What uh, in the economic theory is called multilateral resistance to, to trade. Right. So now the good thing with the gravity model, you can introduce this flexible. You can introduce many other parameters, I mean variables to explain trade. Now, maybe I jump to the model first. Right, so I build that model, right? No, no, don't mind about a lot of repetition and typing, but that's the model. That the trade flow depends on so many factors. The first one is the market size. The next one, D, is the distance. Then I added a lot of relevant factors, which are policy relevant, which can explain trade flow. But what I did is not to use trade flows, the sum of, the sum of uh, imports and exports, I only focus on exports because export is the production generating activity which can create us jobs, create employment, generate uh, revenue for government. So, so the dependent variable there is the export and uh, many others. Now, as I said, this is an quantitative exercise, econometric exercise. I build that model to be measured and uh, the interaction of all those factors will help us to measure the elasticity of trade with respect to economic integration. After several experimentations doing exercise with uh, econometrics, with the focus on economic integration, right? I still ignored the other factors that were there, but I reported the result of, because that's the variable, the dimension which is coming in between 
between trade and poverty. So the first statement is very important. Right? I did not find it appears it appears I did not find a significant impact of economic integration on export. So economic integration variable has minimum impact on trade and poverty. The, the parameters are there, right? So I'm using the word appears because I'm going back to maybe qualify it, right? But what, what does it, it really mean in, in, in with my finding there? The meaning is here. As you increase the degree of openness, that's economic integration, you are likely to expand export by 0 0.19. But that could be subjective. I'm calling that expansion minimal. Yesterday, the ambassador was say it improved from 1 billion to this year 5 billion. If that increase with mine of 0 0.1 is big, then let's call this one is a big impact. Though in econometrics, the thing was insignificant. Now, probably now we have to dig deeper here. I think that's the real meaning of this thing. Economic integration has indeed improved trade. I only qualify qualifying it minimum, big, small, large. We are talking the same language with the with the ambassador. But now for our discussion, how did it come about? Maybe this where trade uh, trademark also comes in. They've done some trade facilitation, right? Which has improved efficiency of trading. But economics would tell us that uh, probably what we call trade creation has overpowered trade diversion. So the reason for my little figure there would make me think that trade creation is taking place. And indeed, that's the purpose of uh, economic integration. There could be a lot more factors to explain that. I'm not going to into it. Okay, let me go back to to qualify some of uh, of this 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 thing. Now the data. I don't want us to deceive ourselves that uh, it is always statistical estimation, right? It is just as good as a qualitative statement we had yesterday. This is a qualitative, right? This is a quantitative statement, right? But it, maybe it is, if you are not a liar, it is better to make a qualitative statement than deceive yourself with statistical figure like mine. Because how sure am I that the data gave me the right, the right thing. My method of estimating the model was the right thing. I can point a few things. We use the panel data from 2000 to, to 2010. And that's a panel data, cross-sectional and longitudinal, right? gave me that. But it's a yearly time series put over 10 years. Now, what has been, a, take for example, Kenya. Something happened in 2007. That probably might have broken that data. 
right? So it is not a sort of a continuous nice time series, right? Take Burundi, something might happen. Take Uganda. So the data itself is questionable, but the sets of the data were there. But what I'm emphasizing with all this type of exercise, shocks do come from outside and affects the data. In, it could be from policy, it could be from a political dimension like elections or whatever. So oh, the point is don't, we have to interpret the figures with a lot of care. Now there's a, another thing behind my measurement is the first one up there. The arising from the methodology. See, when you put an equation like, uh, like that, the first equation, how many explanatory variables are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? There are ten factors I want to explain the improvement or the flows of trade. All right? But uh, from elementary econometrics, we know that there's already a problem. A problem of what we call multicollinearity, right? Because some of these factors may be sitting in the other factor. But I took precaution to test for it that no other factor there also explain the factor otherwise they would be redundant. What's the point of putting them there, right? So those challenges are there. But I pointed out one with such type of exercise. When you report your results, there's a problem of uh, what they call endogeneity. That is the thing on the left hand side, right? And one of the economic variables. they may be explaining each other. That's why we put them there. But is it a one-way relationship or a two-way relationship? Trade explaining economic integration and economic integration explaining trade. And that's the reality. It's a two-way relationship. And to get accurate measurement, we have to see how we can eliminate or minimize that uh, interaction. There are a lot more which I don't need to go into. There's a problem of the equation tells me I use log linear. Why? An economic theory doesn't tell us why not linear. Why not linear? So you are introducing errors from functional form. Right? So I'll not get into that. Only what I wanted to say is that uh, these figures are not gospel truth. Right? Right. I, um, I'm left with enough time to complete my story. Right? Now, out of my model, some of them I didn't, they didn't appear in that equation, but it's an experimentation. I found that uh, there are those drivers or factors which are trade enhancing, which are improving trade. Economic integration is one of them. GDP market size is one of them. Uh, foreign direct investment, per capita income, common border language, colonial history. I think this is what we need to discuss. These are factors which we got from the gravity model, which really can make economic integration in East Africa a success. Colonial history turned out to be positive and significant. Yes, um, Kenya, Uganda, and uh, 
Tanzania has the same colonial masters and uh, all this. The language, I think Israeli is doing a good job and English to boost trade. Common border, I think we are a small group of countries put together. People cross the border freely and out. Per capita income, this way, I think the government is doing some work, right? We are still an underdeveloped country. If we can push ahead and improve our welfare through the increase in per capita income, I think we shall trade more. Richer country, trade more. At the moment, our statement we made either that we are below potential is correct because we are a poor, these countries are poor, right? FDC, 